My name is Gary Sinek and I'm running for re-election for the Gulf Shore City Council, place two. I'd like to tell you a little bit about myself. Many of you know me, I've lived in town for 40 years. I came to Gulf Shores when I hired on the Gulf Shores Fire Rescue Department in 1980. And I served there 34 years. I started out as a paramedic firefighter and worked my way up. And when I retired, I was a battalion chief. And in that time, I gained a lot of valuable knowledge working for the city about all the other city departments. I worked with the police, uh, excuse me, police department a lot and, and public works a lot. So I have a really good working knowledge of the city. And in 2014, I retired. And then 2016, I ran for city council and thanked the good citizens of Gulf Shores, they elected me. And I really love what I do. I care about our town and the citizens here. I've taken care of them for so many years on the fire department. And I want to continue that service. My job isn't done yet. Uh, public safety is my specialty. And I feel that that's probably one of the most important services we can offer to the citizens. There are a lot of other services the city offers public works, parks, recreation, they're all important. But I focus on public safety, that's, that's my forte. There's a lot of things that we need to do to continue to stay ahead of the game in protecting our citizens and our kids at school. So the reason why I'm running is my job's not done yet and I still have a lot more work to do with our public safety and in, with our city in general. There's a lot of new zoning uh, amendments coming up that we have to look at, uh, traffic studies, traffic corridors. There's a lot of other problems that we're faced with here that we have to contend with and growth is something that we're not going to stop. It's We live in a popular place and people love to come here. They want They want to move here. And all we can do is try and make this growth as quality as possible and deal with it on that level. And I think if we continue on like that, I think that we'll be okay. And we have a lot of money uh, available to us for grants, uh, for our roadways and infrastructure. There's a lot of things we're working on that our job is not done yet and we need to continue on the path. And I always encourage citizen input. Whenever I make a post on Facebook, I always put my personal cell phone number out there so I can be available to the citizens. And August 25th, this is uh, about eight days away, uh, I would appreciate your vote and your support for me at Council Place 2. Thank you. One of the challenges faced by many of our local businesses is finding and maintaining adequate staffing to operate their business year round. This challenge is complex and changes throughout the year based on our tourist seasons, but a large part of the challenge appears to be due to lack of education and training opportunities and affordable housing options in our area. Are you aware of these workforce development issues in our area and how would you help our businesses address these challenges? There is definitely uh, a problem with you know, finding good quality help. And that's something we have, uh, it's been a problem for many years here and it probably will be into the future. A lot of people, uh, they just don't, they can't, they come here from school, they're in college, and a lot of people are seasonal. Finding full-time help also is another thing. Uh, our workforce housing, a lot of people live out of town, they don't live in Gulf Shores. It's more affordable to some apartments up north and they get together and room together. Uh, as far as, as trying to, like, I work with G&G &G Plumbing with my brother. We've had our company now for 30-some years, and we have trouble finding quality help. And this is why I think that we need to open up a vocational section in our new Gulf Shore City schools, in the high school mainly, because not everybody's cut out for college, and it's not just the service industry that needs help. There's plumbers, electricians, carpenters, and they're all needed uh, to work. We just can't get the work done at the shop. My brother is constantly referring work out to other plumbers because we can't do it all. We, we can't find the help that we need. And I'm sure a lot of other businesses are. So the vocational uh, courses at the high school, I think will be a big help in getting people trained 
the state has a workforce training that we could explore and an apprenticeship program that they'll help you with. And as far as housing, at one time it was talked about uh, the Coastal Community College having dorm rooms and maybe during the summertime uh, having these dorm rooms to uh, sub as uh, workforce housing. As our local area and economy grows, we need investments to expand and improve existing infrastructure. Such investments include things like better educational mm -hmm. facilities, quality health care, continued traffic improvements such as new roads and bridges, expanded access to high-speed internet, and better access to our natural resources and public facilities. What infrastructures would you like to address and would you support continued investments to expand and improve our existing infrastructure? Yes, I would say uh, traffic is our biggest problem. I was stuck in the traffic the other day coming over the bridge. There was an accident at the foot of the bridge, uh, which that's not all the time. But in general, during the season, spring and summer is always going to be our peak seasons. So I would like to focus on traffic, and that's something we've done as a council. We have secured over $50 million in grants for infrastructure, uh, for our roads, uh, bridges. We have a traffic corridor study done, and we're looking at all of these things. And I think there's no way to really cut down on the amount of traffic here in all reality. You could start a trolley or a bus system, but it's really the people are still going to have to park somewhere to get on this and use it. So what we have to do is find a way to better facilitate the traffic more efficiently, get people around town more efficiently. And this is going to involve, you know, timing of our traffic lights, expansion of our roads, new roads and corridors that are on the east and west side of Highway 59. So there's a lot of different options that, that we're looking at. And as these grants come in, uh, we're going to be it takes time to build roads, and that's just the way it is. You know, we're, we're behind, and we might always be behind trying to keep up. But you have to start somewhere, and that's what we've done. And also, we've passed the uh, lodging tax. We have a 2% of, of the lodging tax goes to our roads infrastructure, and that's a big help in maintaining a lot of the roads that we have to make them nice to drive on, repaving projects. So that... And another, another thing I hear is about internet. That's something else that we have to work on is to get quality internet for our businesses because it's become so important for businesses to have access to the web. Large events that are hosted in our area attract hundreds of thousands of visitors to help stimulate our local businesses throughout the year. Such large events have been proven to benefit our local economy, but must also be balanced with the local quality of life issues. Do you have a position on the concerns with our area hosting such large events that attract such crowds to our city and what might you do to address those citizens' concerns? Okay, the, the biggest concerns I've heard on the, uh, it, basically it's the music fest. The Shrimp Festival has been here for so many years and it's, it's a different atmosphere, I guess, than the music fest is. And the biggest complaint on the music fest is what goes on outside the music fest and there are a lot of you know undesirable people uh, acts of lewdness and uh, public urination and public drunkenness and so that's something we have to deal with and there, there's a contract that was signed years ago uh, for the music fest and one thing we have to look at is we're going to have to put pressure on the promoters to deal with these problems. And if they can't deal with these problems and fix them, then maybe we need to look at, at, at not having the music fest. Because I know there's a lot of people that are against it. There's a lot of citizens that just don't like it. And me, I mean, whether it's here or not, it's, you know, I, it, it doesn't really matter to me. Oh, it, it's a nice event. I've been inside. I've gone out of my way to go inside and walk around and talk to people about drug usage, drunkenness, fighting. And everybody that I talked to, I introduced myself, told them that I was gathering information and that I was on the council. And 
they all they all like the, the fest on the inside I think you'd have a different view of it but it's what the outside we have to deal with and if we can't properly deal with that and it's degrading our quality of life then maybe it's time for it to pass on uh, the shrimp fest is, is a little different I think that's kind of a tradition you don't get that type of well, any large crowd, you're going to get a, a, a little bit of the undesirable uh, behavior. But for the most part, you don't get a lot of that with the shrimp festival. So in, in, in looking at these things, we're just going to have to make sure that we can control what goes on the outside. Uh, and if not, then we'll have to deal with it as such. What is your position on how the city could balance the desire to encourage economic development with the need to limit certain types of businesses from operating in the city? And more specifically, do you think the city should have a role in controlling access to available food options, such as allowing food trucks and other food options to operate within the city? Food trucks is, 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 is one of the topics, and I assume that's mainly what the question is, is, is in reference to. Uh, obviously, I don't want to see any kind of a strip club or anything like that come into town. That's totally against my values and other people's values here in the town. We don't, we don't want that kind of atmosphere. So yeah, I'd be for limiting bad businesses like that. Now as far as the food trucks go, we started a pilot program and that's why we that's why we did a pilot program my biggest concern was i'm not against food trucks i just didn't want to hurt our restaurants that are here year round the brick and mortar operations but at the same time we have to look at uh do we have the right to limit certain types of restaurants and 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 food options as the food trucks so we had a meeting with the, with the restaurant community, and that's when we came up with this pilot program. And we're trying this pilot program for a year. I think it has about another six months to go, uh, if I remember correctly. And at the end of that, we'll go ahead and review, have another meeting with our uh, restaurant people, and decide, uh, do we want to continue it on? Because people do have a right to open up a business here. And that'd be, I, I mentioned earlier about working with my brother and our plumbing company, g, g Plumbing. I very well couldn't go to the council and say, I don't want any more plumbers to come down here because that's not right. We're a brick and mortar building and a lot of guys just work out of their truck, out of their garage and they come down and they, and they, they don't have the overhead that we have to deal with. So, but, but then I don't have that right to tell that plumber not to come down and work. So this is something we're going to have to reevaluate at the end of a year and talk with our restaurant uh, owners and the food truck people and decide whether we want to continue that or not. And uh, I think that's our, the course of action we're taking now I think is the proper one. Thank you.